Hi, I'm Lucas and today I'm here to show you how to export the Tanks project from Unity 5.6 to the latest version of Genesis VR on Steam. So let's get to it. First thing you should do is download the latest version of the Genesis VR and Unity exporter. To do that, go to genesvr.com, hit Tools, go to Unity to Genesis VR. This page will link to our GitHub page. And here you will see the latest version of the Unity exporter. In our case, it is the Unity Exporter version 2.13. So you can download the Unity package and just hit save. And that's all we need to bring data to Janus. First thing to make sure, if you have already imported a Genesis VR Exporter package into your project, you have to make sure to delete the Genesis Exporter folder before proceeding with this tutorial or else the the, pa the packages will might collide and you won't get the update or just might not compile so just to make sure you, you you get everything else clean just make sure you delete the genesis exporter folder delete okay so let's get it to exporting I'm going to open my version of Unity. I'm going to use Unity 5.6, but you can use any version of Unity from Unity 5.0 to up to Unity 2017.1. So I'm just going to hit new. I'm going to name my project Tanks Tutorial and I'm going to create a project. Now that it reopened, let's get to the asset store to grab the Tanks Tutorial package. So I'm going to just hit Window, Asset Store, this will bring up the Asset Store. I'm going to hit Search for Tanks Tutorial. It's going to be the first in the search results. And I'm just going to hit Import and bring this package into my project. Now that the package is imported, I'm going to open the scene. And that is called complete game. And here we have the main vision of the tanks tutorial scene. Now let's get the Genesis VR exporter package imported by hitting assets, import package, custom package, and hitting the package that we just downloaded. Now, to open the Genesis VR exporter, hit Window Genesis VR exporter. This will give us a Genesis VR exporter window that we can drag to our working area. Let's have a quick overview of all the options we have on the exporter. The exporter is divided into several sections, each corresponding to a type of data that we can convert into Genesis content. So here we have the asset objects part. We begin with search type. The search type is how you want to separate your 3D models, in this case FPX files. So we have each mesh. In each mesh we export one model file per unity mesh inside the scene. So essentially we are brute force in the separation of our model files if they are of course if they're not already all separated. But that means that the models are all now independent and they can be reutilized in other scenes. We also have per material that will group the meshes by material and export them together. So it basically each material in the scene will become a model file. This can be very beneficial for scenes with low low amounts of materials and high amounts of models. But be careful of using this as we don't have a way of exporting multi-material objects under this option. We also have Perlite Map ID, which is currently a, uh, an experimental feature which basically groups meshes by their light map ID and so basically on this scene we, we will only have one texture so that will be just one one mesh for the entire scene this is the lightest this, uh, the lightest amount you can get
Permaterial has sometimes an, an advantage of up to 40 to 60 percent over each bash, just because we don't we don't expect so much file headers. Next, we have uniform scale. This controls the entire scale of your scene when translating the model files to Genos VR. This will this will basically bake the vertex position so you can convert uh, so you can uh, mesh the scale inside Genos and, and make make sure that your scene is not out of size. So now next we have the main section. And here we have export path. This export path is a path to the folder where we're going to export the scene to. By default it's going to point to your Genos VR workspaces folder, which you can see here. That's basically in your documents folder, slash Genos VR slash workspaces, slash the name of the project, which in this case is Unite Boston 2015 Training. Which uh, This is the default, so you can change by hitting the three arrows here, but I'm, this is easier to test because we can just open workspaces in Genos. So I'm just going to leave it here, like this. Next we have use, use your Euler rotations which is only available in Genus 59 plus. So this option enables the export of using Euler rotations for the objects instead of the old three directions vectors. So but but still they basically they still work the same. But the Euler rotations are more and more easy for humans to read and modify. So I, I would recommend you just leave that on. It just works better. So next we have the texture section. We have the force export, re-export. So next we have the texture section and starting with the force re-export. So if this option is enabled, all the textures will be reprocessed to the exporter pipeline. So for example, all the materials, so if I enable all the materials are gonna be exported to JPEG so I can port, uh, for a, a change quality if I just wanna make, uh, make this export to Genesis, make, uh, make it be a smaller file or just make my scene, grow, uh, my scene files be smaller so this is a, a quick way of converting your or all your textures to JPEG. Uh, remind you that this is this does not affect light maps. We're gonna talk about this later. So you can also use PNGs, and PNGs are lossless, so you don't have an option for quality. So, but still, anyway, the the textures that will need to be exported, even though this option is off, if a texture needs to be reprocessed, it's gonna use the option that you leave here. So next we have the scene section. We have the export inactive objects, which is pretty much self-explanatory. It's just for exporting the objects that we that are disabled on Unity. We have export dynamic objects, which is basically for uh, if we we are going to export objects that are static or not. Because we have export textures. If we basically if we should process the textures. Through the through the exporters pipeline, export materials, which is an option that you can if you disable the it's gonna export without the textures and all the diffuse colors, so you can see only the lighting results, so you can see how the your lighting is getting into Genesis. And we have export skybox. This option does two things. It depends on your skybox. If your skybox has a six texture configuration, it will just copy the textures from the skybox and process through then through the pipeline. If your skybox is a Unity procedural one, like the default one here, or here you can see the default skybox, it's gonna render them to uh, to the texture that you specify here, in this case 1024. So it's gonna be six frames of 1024, and then it's gonna export this to the format that is choose here in the texture, the, which is the common format for the materials. Next we have the probe section. The export environment probe will, will get the environment probe generated by the light mapper and generate the radiance and irradiance map using CMFT under these resolutions. So we can get this data inside Genesis so to make the light look exactly the same. Next we have light maps. We have light map type. Uh, if you want if you, if you want light maps, you want to stick with packed. If you don't want app apps, go to none. But the other two options, bake material and unpacked, are just for testing. Bake material will bake the, the light maps into the material, so it, 
each object will have its own texture that is going to be independent. So it's a, it's memory hog. It's just uh, it's just a way for your quick testing because it doesn't need UV ones to to get a, to get light maps on. And you also have unpacked, which is pretty much the same. It's just but it uses UV one, but it unpacks and doesn't use the 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 atlases that Unity has, uses. So I'm gonna use I'm gonna be using Pact. In the light map format, it, by default, it's gonna be set at EXR, which is Open EXR, which is a high dynamic format, and it's gonna be exported at 16 bits. And this is essential to have a, an exact copy to get into Genesis. In this format, EXR is lossless. All the other formats you're gonna get a uh, you're gonna get laws in the conversion. So for example, if even if you go to PNG, which is a lossless compression, but still you can it can hold high dynamic range. So you have you're gonna have to make a com uh, conversion to to low dynamic range. We're, we're gonna be seeing that uh, soon uh, after we try exporting. So let's get to exporting. Let's see what happens if you try exporting this scene with the default parameters and the default everything inside to Genesis. I'm just gonna hit full export, and we can see here that now we have the button showing Explorer because now we, exp we we the folder for our scene exists. So we see here the model files for all our objects. We can even check them out on View 3D. It, the export is working fine. We have the radius and uh, the radius and. We have the radiance and irradiance map for the reflection probe. We have the renders for the skybox. And we have our JML right here. So let's test it out inside Genesis. So I exported the default the default path. So the default path is is set by in the workspaces. So I can just type workspaces here. I'm gonna set it to full screen. And now it's gonna be at the very end because it's called Unite Boston 2015 training day. And here, here we go. As you can see, the the export work. We have the, all the models here. The skybox is here. Everything is kind of looking pretty much the same, but we don't have lighting. Uh, but let's let's make the lighting come into Genesis. So to do the lighting, we need to modify some things inside the scene. For example, Unity on this case is using real-time lighting, and we we can't export that into Genesis. So so we're gonna have to adjust some parameters to make sure that we can get this lighting into into Genesis. So first thing I want to do is make sure that all the lights that I want to be set to uh, that that I want to render and show in Genesis, I want to make sure that they are set to static or, or to baked or mixed. So I'm gonna search here in the hierarchy for light, and here I'm gonna see a directional light, which is the. In this case, this scene only has one light, so I'm just gonna change this one. But if you had more lights, you would change all of them to to bake the lighting. So we have here mode. It's real time. I want to change it to mixed or baked. So we can have it baked. Now I want, uh, I'm gonna make sure that all my meshes are set to static. I'm gonna ch ch search for mesh renderer, which is gonna bring up all the mesh renders in the scene. I'm gonna hit Ctrl A, and here I have a uh, list of all the mesh renders we see here, and all of them are set to light map static and static set to on. So okay, it's all set. And now just to finish up, I'm gonna see the model files here. I'm gonna go here in the project. I'm gonna go to the models, and here we have all the models of the project, and I'm gonna make sure that all of them have the generate light map UVs ticked, and it apply. So now the the last thing that we need is just to set it to static lighting. I'm just gonna go window lighting settings. This can be just Windows lighting if you're I think on Unity 5.5 or below, but I'm sure Unity 5.6 is Windows lighting settings. Here we have lighting. 
You can see real-time lighting. You can disable that and enable baked global illumination. And if you're on Unity 5.6 or later, you can set it to subtractive. Now the light map resolution, I'm going to set it to 0.1 so it renders faster. But you can set it to a higher value like 1, so it will take some time, but it will get a better result without changing the size of the light maps. What will change the size of the light maps is the light map resolution. I want just one light map texture with, uh, with size 1024 by 1024, so I'm going to use size 5 here, which is going to make uh, a, a, a nice result that will show, will get us a nice scene inside Genesis, not, not so high res, but still we'll hold it on. I'm gonna hit compress. Com uh, compress can take some time. I usually take it off, uh, take it off for testing, but I'm just gonna hit, uh, leave it on just to show the the because the difference in size is like uh, is like a, a fifth of the size. Directional mode. I'm gonna set to non-directional because we don't need directional as if we don't need uh, all that data. And now I'm just gonna hit generate lighting. Okay, the lighting build, we have some data here. And if you go to the folder of the scene, you can see that we have now we now have a light map texture. You can see the light map comp light.exr open exr light map that it was generated by Unity. So let's just try hitting export on the ex uh, and let's just try doing a, an export again now with those uh, with the lighting updated and just seeing what we'll get inside Genesis. And I hope export and wow we changed the scene the whole scenery but wait that's too much JPEG we can just change it here to PNGs and have some less blockiness oh much better now if you're exporting PNG you can you you have to convert to low dynamic range so to convert to low dynamic range, we'll have to crunch a little bit of data. So you can choose how much of the data we cut and how uh, how the brightness we can scale up. So we have here the light map relative f stops. So you can we can change a little bit of the brightness just so that the light maps look the way that you want them to. That's it for this video.